Great. Uh, so it is 4.01 and seeing a quorum, I'm going to go ahead and um, start this meeting. Um, so I'm going to first perform a sound check to make sure that you can be heard um, and hear. Uh, so uh, Anika. Yes. Alex. Yes. Great. And then we also have Craig DiCarlo from Collier's. Yes. Great. Uh, we have one attendee today um, in the public at the moment. Um, so pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to this Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar of the Town of Amherst website or by dialing in my phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. So with that done, uh, the first item that we have on our agenda for today is um, approval of the minutes of May 6th of 2022. Um, if folks had a chance to review those, um, I would take a motion to approve those minutes. Move to approve. And a second. Second. Thank you. Um, any questions, comments, changes to the meeting minutes? No. Okay, hearing none. Um, uh, Nika, how do you vote? Yes. And Alex? Yay. Okay, and Alex Lefebvre is a yes. Uh, moving on to item number three, which is online comments platform. So um, uh, one of the things that we've talked about is collecting feedback from the comment. We've been doing it physically in person, but also having a methodology for doing it online. Um, so a couple of things that we were talking about um, with the UMass, um, the folks at UMass who have the community participation tools and the town previously used these when they were looking at Kendrick Park and they used both the tools. So um, Christine Gray Mullen and I both met with um, two of the people from UMass and they're, they're great. It was super exciting to talk to them. Um, and so one of the tools is called, well, we, we named it when we use it for Kendrick Park, we called it Amherst Talks. Um, and it's essentially a small town social network. Um, so it's an asynchronous engagement platform where the public can share their thoughts and interact with, in this case, the outreach subcommittee. Um, the way that it works is to access the site. Somebody would need to either register with a password or they could just link it to Facebook, Instagram, or some other social media account that they have that's existing. And it can be used for like specific poll questions. If we want to put poll questions out to the public, um, specific choices. If we get to a point where we're looking at, you know, color palettes or design choices where there's actual choices versus right now where it's more open ended. Um, and then also to the extent that we want to have um, engagement questions. And so I'm going to share my screen here. Um, so one of the things I shared in the packet that probably nobody had a chance to look at yet, and I apologize, that's completely my fault, is a draft community engagement plan if we work with UMass. And so the summary is just basically the building project. The relevant documents are the building project website page, the draft schematic design, a link to the video presentation by the architects of the latest draft schematic design, and then the draft timeline that's been put together by Collier's. And so, you know, these are potentially initial engagement questions. And these are the questions that uh, were come up with that people, came, I think Collier's came up with in conjunction with everybody else about sort of these are the things that we're seeking in terms of information. And then um, I just had them add that, you know, should Jones Library have gender neutral bathrooms and should we use cross laminated timbers because those were two things. I knew about that were currently being discussed. Um, so I guess the question is, do we do it? Does anybody have questions about it? Do we want to use this as a tool? Um, 
do people want to take time to look at the engagement questions or do we send these over and have them get started and see what they come up with? I guess I'm just sort of throwing out to the group, you know, how we want to proceed. I think it would be interesting to have them get started. It seems like, you know, I mean, we need a, as, as much as we, as we can, as many mechanisms as we can to engage with the public. So um, I personally, I don't see a reason to hold off. Great. Yeah, I guess my only question is if this is a UMass hosted thing, will they also be sharing it with UMass lists of like if students or residents or, or professors or residents, will they also be sharing it with their own lists? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Alex. So it's actually, I wasn't very clear in the beginning, sorry. So um, there are students, doctoral and fellow students at UMass who are working around citizenship participation tools utilizing digital technology. And so their thought is by creating sort of small town social networks, they're trying to engage different groups of people than might normally come to public meetings. And so this would be a site, this would be our site that we would control who it goes to, how it gets out there, how it's used, what, so it's, it's, it only involves UMass in the sense that we are engaging a, a group of students who are doing this work around their, their doctoral and fellowship studies. Um, but everything else is controlled by us. And like I said, um, the town used it once already on Kendrick Park and it looks like the number of people who used it were like maybe 15 or 16 people. It wasn't a lot, but it was successful and well received. Um, I, I, from my own sense of looking at it, I think it especially has value if we were to create something specific for say the teens, because the teens I think would have no problem engaging on sort of a social media platform where you put up pictures or put up ideas and that they get to respond to. Um, does that answer your question, Alex? Totally. Um, you know, I think the, the one, Yes, and like I think that this is wonderful and, and like was said earlier that uh, using as many modalities as possible is great. Um, I also just know, you know, the tremendous amount of effort it can be to create content and like once content stops or lags that it's very hard to maintain engagement. Um, and so if I want to be thoughtful of like how how do we roll this out in a way where there's like a steady stream of content and maybe if Collier's had an idea of like where it would be most impactful in the plan um, so that it's not a long drawn out thing, but it's something that people are signing on to every day for a week and, you know, we're able to hammer out those sort of things, if that makes sense. Craig, did you want to comment? Um, that's actually, uh, Xander's got a great point, you know, um, I think there'll be some over the next, say, two months, there'll be some periods of intense um, inquiry where, where the design team will be looking for feedback um, and there will be lots of content coming out, images, drawings, you know, draft, um, drafts of different uh, presentation materials. Um, but that, that high frequency won't be sustained for a long period of time. And so, um, yeah, maybe we, maybe it's like a sprint right now, um, and then you know you clo close things down or or let everyone know like, hey, check back in, and then throw a date out or a month out, uh, more content available then. Uh, okay. So that I, I think I think that the two could work well together. And I'd also imagine if, and I think that this was said in previous conversations about this platform that like many others, there can be, you know, scheduled posting. So, um, you know, as to avoid lulls um, or, you know, as, as Craig said, to kind of communicate, you know, check back at, at this time. Um, and the other, um, what I also think is, is great about this is it will allow people who 
are there, you know, do not have the time to tune into these meetings or make it to events to be able to communicate on their time and when is convenient for them. You know, so I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that this could broaden our, our audience. And um, last, from my recollection, I think that this group was like specifically interested in working with this project, um, you know, feeling that, you know, we would be a good tester, so to speak. Yeah. So the other tool that we talked with them about is called Community Click. Um, and so it's a novel real-time feedback system where residents can anonymously provide their thoughts and reactions as meeting happen, meetings happen. And the thought is, you know, when people are watching a meeting, many people have things to say, but don't necessarily want to raise their hand and speak publicly, which is really the only option sort of in the current, you know, meeting setting. Um, and so what would happen is if we were to use the tool, the public, when they sign on to the meeting, um, a link and a QR code would be displayed on the meeting screen. Um, and then if the public wants to, they can click on that either on the same device, which opens a second screen or on a phone or separate device. Um, and then we would, we would put up sort of whatever we want. So we could have anything from people saying like, you know, I love this, I don't like this, I'm confused, I don't understand, I have questions to, you know, what, whatever sort of the range of feedback is that we're looking for from people. And then it actually time stamps all of the comments for when they're being given. So what, um, what we had talked about was maybe on May 27th, I believe it is, you tell me if I'm wrong, Craig, that the architects are going to be coming with the first schematic design and talking about the gender neutral bathrooms? Yes, uh, both a design, a layout update and, and also some more information on the, the gender uh, inclusivity um, on the 27th. So an example might be, you know, if we wanted to specifically take the pulse of people around, you know, gender neutral bathrooms, we could set up that design meeting so that, you know, basically when people are watching that portion, they can be clicking on what they're hearing, you know, either I'm confused or I like it or I don't like, you know, whatever it is. So that's a tool that we could use in either the JLBC meetings, the design meetings, or we could save it for a virtual event. So for example, if after we get this first set of schematics, we want to have a virtual event where we present sort of the status of designs and where they are, then that we could use it for that. So, I mean, there's lots of options. It's just how people want to use it, if people want to use it. I'm always for making it easier to yell at us. So yes, I think we should use it. Um, okay. The On the other thing, the, the network, um, one idea that comes to mind is also going back to uh, each group of people that was running a station at the um, at the big open house at the Jones and asking them specifically what they would want to use it for now and whom they'd want to send it to as a way to empower our, uh, each like, I don't wanna call them subcommittees, but um, each group of folks to like really start asking those questions. So I could imagine the teens, uh, if they want to narrow down some of like the information that they have or keep building out that list, who do they want to send that to as we're doing? And that also would extend to the sort of traveling roadshow version of that, of like, if we're doing something in partnership with someone, do you also want to make this available? You know, that week you can ask or be the, the content creators basically for our network. Um, and send it out to people that you want to, to get involved as well. And that might help us uh, share the load. Thanks, Alex. Mika, any thoughts? I'm sorry. Yep, just any, anything you want? Just giving you an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I agree. Those are, um, you know, those are, I, I mean, I agree with everything that everyone said right now, all great points. Okay, great. Um, so one other thing that I've been working on with um, Matt Ruby at the library um, is a Padlet. Um, let me share my screen again. So this is a Padlet. Um, 
the nice thing about a Padlet is anybody can access it. Scary thing about a Padlet, anybody can access it. So there's sort of two potential ideas. One is, you know, these are, you know, pictures. These are basically the tables, right, that we had um, for the event and the pictures that we had. Um, and this would allow people to go on and they could, you know, they could heart something. Um, they could add a, a comment like, you know, love the desks or wh wh whatever they want to do. Um, they also could upload their own pictures of library spaces that they like. Um, and my thought was when we are places like the Amherst Survival Center or out at events, um, the ginormous binder that I created, while that was a lot of fun to create, it's cumbersome and it's big. And I think some people will want the detail that it contains of each section of the building project, but I think other people might prefer sort of this uh, easier to view, easier to navigate. And it can be done this way, or it could be done with the comments that we've received to date as sort of the starting point and then people adding comments versus pictures. Um, so a couple of things about Padlet um, is that there are three ways that you can create a Padlet. One is password protected. So it's hidden from the public. Um, we share it with who we want and the only way to get into it is with a password. Um, the second, which is how this is currently set up is it's hidden from the public, meaning like, and when I say public, I'm not, I mean like trolls out in the internet <laughs> is what I'm thinking of big public. So we could share, anyone we share it with can open it and comment, no password required. And obviously that's a really low threshold, which is nice. Um, we have the ability, the library sends out a weekly blast to about 10,000 people. <laughs> so it, I mean, it, it's easy to distribute among people who are part of the library. And then um, the last is it's public, it's open to all. So anybody does an internet search and then can just go to town adding comments. Um, so those are different security settings. And then also how people view posts. So it can be a read only. So if we wanna provide a place for people to sort of land, see public comments, but they can't do anything, that's one option. Or it can be what this is set up right now, which is to view an ad post. So nobody can change the base that we have, but they can add their comments, they can heart, and then they can add their own pictures, but they can't like change something. So if Anika adds a picture that she likes, you know, Alex can't go in and delete that picture, but you can part it or make comments about it. Um, so this was just one other potential tool that we may or may not want to use. So I throw it to you too to give me your thoughts. <laughs> I um I can so I, I like the different options here. I'm I'm a big fan with any project, especially with engagement, you know an outreach to kind of be mindful of, you know, I think you have like your skimmers, swimmers and divers, you know? Um, so, and I think, you know, with a lot of folks, like when you're in the weeds and it's your project, like you're full on diver, you know? And I think this really gives people the opportunity to, you know, you can see it as a glance, you know, at a, at a glance, and you know, you have the opportunity to go, um, to go further in. Um, and I think that sometimes the, the skimmers tend to get left out, like those people you need to capture, like in those first 10 seconds, you know, um, and they just, they want to see it uh, at a glance. So I do, um, yeah, I like the idea that people also, because there are so many images and there have been, um, that people also, you know, have the opportunity to, you know, add theirs. Um, I like this. Thanks. Alex? Oh, I just also want to say, I really like that framing. I hadn't heard skimmers, swimmers, and divers, and I really like that. So thank you for that, Nika. Um, My mantra. <laughs> nice. The, uh, yeah, I mean, like this, this makes sense. Um, it very much reminds me of an old Pinterest board I used to have. Um, the, I think the, like in terms of the level of security or whatever, uh, I like the idea of it being um, invitable, right? Where like people can share this link um, for similar reasons than, or 
than what I was talking about with the networks. I think this would be another great tool to empower our partners to share with their lists or their people. Um, so I, I don't know if that's technologically possible, but just like, uh, you know, for example, the example that got up earlier about the uh, survival center, right? And like, is this something that can be made available for folks to see there, like not only at that event, but like folks that they're in connection with as well? Yeah, so yeah, you can copy the link. We can send it to anybody. There's actually a QR code if we want to use that. In fact, with the town, the little boards that are all over town, in theory, we could upload a QR code and people could access it that way. Um, we can embed it on the project website. Um, you can email it, we can put it on Facebook. So it's we, we can get out there any way we want. Um, do you guys have a thought about just leaving it sort of picture oriented like this versus, you know, people seeing what comments we're gathering? Is there an option to click to like instead of like forcing people like so they can they have the option to see the comments if they want to? Yeah, I mean, one thing um, I was thinking about, and actually, this might be a good segue into. Uh, let's see, where is this? So this is these are the public comments that we've been collecting, and you know it's not as pretty <laughs> as what we have up in some other spaces, but you know, these are the comments collected to date um, that we could make this document, you know, so that people can real time just see the comments as they're coming in from people as well as the frequency. And I'm gonna let um, Craig give you an update about sort of what's, what's going on here with the colors and the sorting and things, just so you guys know. Uh, certainly Alex. So um the design subcommittee is going to be they're they're doing a little homework right now and uh later this week on the 19th their goal is to go through all the current comments and um make not necessarily make a decision on but uh decide how each are going to be handled um in general they're looking at you know a couple different buckets um where some the you know it's going to be like yes that's already in our, in our scopes, we're gonna include that in the design. Yes, we want to include that in the design, um, but it's not in there yet. Maybe, but you know, it depends on the feasibility uh, and, and you know, maybe not because it doesn't seem either appropriate or attainable. So that, that first layer, that first round of review is gonna start, is gonna happen, uh, what is that, Thursday the 19th. And then they'll hand that information. So the things that are yeses, you know, strong yeses or or maybe's, uh, actually maybe possibly even the uh, we don't think so's will be handed up to the library building committee, who will ultimately decide. All right, this is the packet of comments that we want to give to Fine Gold Alexander to either incorporate immediately, confirm it's already incorporated, or you know consider and look at the feasibility of. So that's the current plan. Yeah, and, and Craig's the one who actually identified these. So Craig went through the list and this list is updated daily. Um, so there are, are 90 unique comments that he highlighted, which uh, a frequency total of 273 comments. And just so people have a sense, we are uh, currently as of yesterday at 840 uh, comments received to date so far that are on this chart. So. Fantastic. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so Alex, that actually, I forgot to bring that up. So the, the stuff that's in yellow at, at uh, review date is prop 519 that's proposed 519. I was trying to prioritize the items that I thought would, um, the design team would most benefit from hearing now or soon, uh, just based on where they are in the design process. So it's not that the yellow ones are more important, it's just that they're more timely. Right, things like design of grounds, furniture, or things that don't have to be decided right this minute. Right. Um, yeah, so that's where we are in terms, so my, my thought was that we would put that Padlet up um, for people and we could share it with partners. I think that's a great idea, Alex. Um, and that we would start working with Amherst talks about 
having the asynchronous that people we can, as we identify questions, we want to particularly ask people and then the community click, we can decide which meetings we want that to be part of sort of a multi pronged approach, and then we continue to have the charts up at the library that are um, continuing to get feedback on those uh, daily so living next to the library I literally go over daily <laughs> take a picture of them and compare them and update the chart so. Um, yeah anybody else questions or comments about online platforms thoughts. If we could not use the word asynchronous, I think as a parent of three young people coming out of distance learning, I would like to not hear that term ever again. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I feel like I also share that trauma. I hear you, Alex. <laughs> okay, so um, item four on our agenda is um, the keeping the community informed. Um, so, um, do people have thoughts about uh, the comments that we, the public comments that we just looked at? Like, do we, it's not a very exciting looking document, I realize, but um, like, do we wanna just put that out there as a view only that's linked to our project site so people can see things real time or does that make sense? Okay, um, great. Uh, and then, um, uh, next thing in the informing the public is, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, right here, maybe? Hold on. Sorry, I'm navigating where things live. Yes, okay. Um, so this is potentially an inaugural project newsletter. So the conversation is uh, perhaps while we are in schematic design, which is the busy, busy time, maybe this is a weekly newsletter. Um, and then as we move into design development, maybe it's every two weeks. And then as we move into the project, maybe it's monthly. But the idea being uh, something where people can quickly, the skimmers <laughs> can quickly come see sort of what's going on. Um, so this is just, an idea draft people can feel free to tear it apart. Um, but um, Craig sort of helped put together, um, you know, just sort of some key dates in the project timeline. So this isn't everything, but it might be things that people want to know. Um, and then there are embedded links to the actual project timeline, letting people know about upcoming outreach events. Um, where they can link to share a comment with us. I don't know what that really what you know what we're working on what's coming soon um and then just kind of an update so right you know here was our may one event here's how many people came how many comments we collected last week you know we did the get out and play event with amherst rec we went to the senior center open house you know and as of may 16th you know we have uh we're up to 820 comments uh, and then maybe a project update like May 9th, you know, the architect started on the plans. Here's a link to the current schematic design. This is what happens in schematic design. Here's a link to the building program. You know, we're collecting feedback through July 1. Um, you know, top trending public comments for the week. People can kind of see what's surfacing up to the top. Um, and then upcoming public meetings, ideally with links, and then maybe sort of what the topics are to again, help people are like, oh, I really wanna hear about that item. I love this and I, I think it works better than even a full out like the calendar that uh, we had talked about because I, I think it's important to have something fresh and um, you know something that changes weekly. Um, you know, I love the trending, the top trending public comments. Um, you know, there, there's just a lot that I, I think anything that is put out that people feel like, oh, I have to keep, you know, I, need, I have a reason to come back, you know. Um, yeah, the, the upcoming public meetings. I think this, this is great and it's easily shareable. That's, that's, um, that's what I like. Like we can, you know, that'll, you know, of course sending this, I think this will, this will work nicely sending out to all of the volunteers as, as well and kind of getting people prepared to, to look for it and, you know, 
share it on as as many through as many networks and all of us and partners as possible. Great. I'm getting a thumbs up from Alex. <laughs> That's good. Okay. All right. Um, great. So, Craig, you have any thoughts? This is your first time seeing it. <laughs> I think it looks great. I think the uh, being concise um, with links to more in depth information is the exact right way to go. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a link to the project website at the top. And I, and I think, too, like as we get other tools going, whether it's the Padlet or the Amherst Talks, I mean, they can all be embedded in LinkedIn here. So, okay, um, great. Uh, so I think that's it for the keeping community informed unless people have other ideas or thoughts about things they wanna do. No, just really inspiring and impressive amounts of work. Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's what well, you know as long as as long as they don't allow me in the school building, you know, this is <laughs> I'm not baking with children, but I, I am uh, I am having fun around the library. So yeah, you're okay. making up for it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so item number five is next outreach events. Um, so I still don't have times from the town on the Olympia Oaks in the Village Park. I have dates, but not times. I know there's a League of Women Voters the same day as the Olympia Oaks and their meeting crest. I, I don't know if it's the same or- Oh, so. I, can, I can tell you that I think. Oh, yay. <laughs> I, ah, okay, I'm speaking too soon. I don't know why this computer just froze. Huh. Okay, I don't know what just happened, but as soon as it, as it unfreezes, I, I may have to send this to you after, but I know I did just, I did just see an email about that, that included okay. time. Oh, maybe I got maybe I got it too, and I just haven't looked at it yet. Um, I don't know. If you have to a council email. May have, but you may have, you may have as well. If yeah. not, I'll if you, check. Know, if you know, I'll add it to the newsletter. So um, Saturdays nine to twelve, we're going to start tabling with the friends of the Jones um, outside the Amherst Farmers Market. We'll do that through July one at least, and then decide you know once we're through schematic, sort of how we want to keep doing that. Um, I met with um, Marcella from Amherst Survival Center, um, such a good partner. So uh, we can start tabling, on, we can table anytime we want, but the thought was to do it Thursdays from 11 to one. Um, that's when they tend to have a good group of people that come through. Um, they're providing us with a table. Um, we may want to look, Tapestry Health comes once a month on Friday, so it might make sense when Tapestry is coming to sort of table on the same day with them. Um, they have also offered us on Thursdays, um, the Survival Center is open late, but their cooling station closes at three. So we could do uh, an event at the Survival Center basically any Thursday uh, between three and seven. So, and they'll advertise for us, they'll, you know, get out the word for us. So if we want to host an event there um, in person, we can. Um, we're in the works with Applewood. I know it's gonna be a Saturday. I just don't know which Saturday yet. And we've reached out to Green Leaves. We're waiting to hear back from them. I think those are the upcoming events. <laughs> Um, and then I know we talked at one of our meetings about having a virtual event for people. Um, and I wasn't entirely sure what a virtual event looks like, um, but I thought, again, maybe once we have the first schematic back from Feingold after May 27th, maybe that's the time to do a virtual event. And then we could present sort of the latest schematics and what we're wrestling with or what decisions are ahead. That, like a, a forum style? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I just I have no idea what's coming. So it makes it hard to plan. We <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Craig, do you have any thoughts about that? I mean, about us sort of doing a virtual event with whatever, because there's going to be multiple schematics, like, like we have the ones from October 20th, we're gonna, uh, you know, one now, and then like we're gonna get it again and again. I don't, so I don't know. Right, and so that design is gonna be evolving. And I, I can't remember if it was in this forum or one of the other meetings we talked about. It's not likely that there's going to be 
here's layout A, here's layout B, here's layout C, which one do you like best? It'll be more like, um, here is the latest layout. We'll get comments, feedback. The design team will respond to those. Um, here's the next version, more comments, more feedback, respond to those. And so it'll be like an evolution of plans. So after May 27th, yes, we should have some fresh layouts that uh, sort of the latest and greatest for people to take a look at and, and react to. Great, okay. So then if it makes sense, I can reach out to the library about you know, scheduling a virtual event after May 27th um, that we can start advertising for. Um, and then do people have thoughts around the Survival Center? If we do a in-person event at the Survival Center, like do we do a mini version of what we did at the library? Do we do something different? I mean, people have thoughts about what that might look like or should look like. Is there one table, would you say? It would be, there would be a table there? So we can table every Thursday. We could table every day if we wanted, but I mean, I was thinking once a week. Um, so we can table, and there are two things actually that we can do sort of weekly. One is we could take that Padlet, say on an iPad or a computer, and then people who are experiencing homelessness who are using the cooling station, we could go in and have one-on-one -on -one conversations and get feedback from them. But then we can also outside when people are collecting um, you know, lunch and the fresh produce and things from outside, we would be at the table to be collecting feedback from them. But then the survival centers offered if we want to have an in-person event where we invite people to come like set up at the survival center, like we did at the library, that we could have an actual in-person event where we invite the community um, into the building mm -hmm. if we want, or maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I think probably if it was uh, coordinated, maybe, I mean, maybe if it was coordinated with, I guess, one of, well, it's, I'm assuming that Thursday is, um, you know, a, a popular day. I'm not, I'm not sure, or maybe like around when, when the survival center is, is doing something that would attract more people than, than, an average or are, are they would know I'm sorry I don't mean to babble I'm just trying to think of like um how how would that be planned it would just be is like Thursday just the regular day at, at the survival um survival center so the way that their schedule works is um Wednesday they're closed for an office administration day and Thursday is the one day that they're open late um and then they're open one Saturday a month and so um, going weekly, I mean, this time of year, they're just, they're, they're getting busy now, regardless. Um, usually sort of Thursday, Fridays are their busy day. Usually right. the, end of the month is their busy day, um, busiest times. But the reality is they're just seeing a constant flow of people right now. So it, it didn't sound like it mattered a whole lot. Um, and then the 11 to one made sense. So I guess the question is, you know, we did the in-house at the library. Like, do we just want to do little targeted events like farmer's market, tabling at the survival center, you know, the outreach at the apartments, or do we want to have another sort of event like we had at the library, but hold it in North Amherst, you know, at the survival center. So pre-pandemic, um, right, because you both moved here during the pandemic. So pre-pandemic, it was not uncommon for events to be hosted at the survival center. And it didn't necessarily have to be a survival center event because they have a beautiful space where people used to come together and eat lunch every day, but that hasn't happened since the pandemic. Um, so it's just a space in North Amherst if we want to have an in-person event on a larger scale rather than just sort of these targeted smaller events. But I mean, maybe we don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know people's feelings, whether we just sort of stick with targeted events at this point. I think, oh, I'm sorry, I just want to tell you. So the um, the League of Women Voters event, that is from 3 to 5 p.m. Is that the same though? As what I'm trying to figure out is that, so Jennifer Moyston had said that there, so there, there's the event, there's Olympia Oaks Butternut and Village Park events with Cress. And the Olympia Oaks Butternut is on the same day. And so I don't know if Cress is just, 
don't know if Earl Miller is just like everywhere all the time. Or... 22nd? Huh? 22nd? Yeah. So, um, I, well, I think that this this one, I know last night it was announced that, um, I think they were waiting for confirmation, but it would be both Earl Miller and um, the new uh, director for the DEI program. Right, so right. Yeah, I just don't know whether the event that Jennifer was telling us about like a month ago that we put on the calendar is the League of Women or whether there's a separate town event. That's actually, because I thought- the question For the Crest, that's League of Women Voters. No, I know, but there's also town was taking Cress out to the apartment complexes, mm -hmm. so that's why. Anyway, so I, I have I I have a follow. -up. One is if they told us is that Groff Park Pavilion exactly, which is why I thought they were separate events, but they sound very similar because there's food and music and Cress. So yeah, I know. I, I mean, I just saw this one was announced by the League of Women Voters last night, and so. So separate, I, I mean, I don't know, confirm with Jennifer, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one. Okay, all right, good. Um, if, like, I think in terms of having a big in-person event at the Survival Center, like, it makes sense. Um, it sounds like there's sort of two, just thinking about, sorry, my background is in campaigns. So I think of things in like campaign arcs and narratives. Um, and it sounds like there are sort of like two major uh, escalation points, for lack of a better term, um, when schematic one comes out and when schematic two comes out. And I think uh, you mentioned for at least one of those doing an online forum style thing. And I think it would make sense for the other one to be at the survival center, right? And doing a big event then. Um, that way we can also, at all of these smaller events, uh, drive traffic of like, come see your comments in action when we release the first schematic at the survival center on whatever date we expect that to be. Um, come, you know, and then see, and then join us again on the internets for blah, blah, blah. Craig, how far in advance will we know when new schematics are coming out for us to be able to in advance plan events. So we'll have a new, some new drawings on the 27th and then you'll probably have updates for the following three or four weeks um, at, um, or maybe every other week. Okay. Uh, but then um, that'll be, by then we'll be at the end of schematic design and we'd be rolling into design development, which at that point, the layout's pretty well locked down, but now there's lots of other, you know, those other decisions that we were talking about will, will come more into play. Uh, so as far as drawing layouts, we'll have one on the 27th, uh, possibly two weeks after that, another kind of update. It will be pretty fast, pretty, you know, rapid tempo. <laughs> to say the least but um and then after that it basically every time the design committee design subcommittee is meeting uh i believe that feingold alexander will be invited and you know some new it'll be an opportunity for them to show off some new information and solicit more input and just remind me the, question. the 27th is there an event already scheduled as far as I know, it's just a design subcommittee meeting. So that's, but that's the one that Feingold Alexander said, yes, we will have some new information, new designs uh, to sort of show off, to showcase at that point. So could the event be that, that I know all these meetings have been virtual, but um, either could that event be that like, we're driving people to the 27th design committee, to see the unveiling and that's our online thing. Mm. Um, and then we're meeting at the uh, survival center the week or two following that, um, like you said, Craig, because there's gonna be another round of drawings that are coming out every week or so. Yeah, and actually now that I think about it, it'd be probably more like every other week. I think that's the tempo of the design subcommittee meetings. And so that's the tempo that Bangle Alexander is gonna be aiming to uh, provide information. 
Yeah, I mean, Alex, that's what I was thinking was using the community click at that May 27th meeting. So driving people to that meeting and then they could, you know. Um, now the problem with problem, the fly in the ointment is the design meetings are like Fridays at 9 a.m., which I know I can never attend that meeting. Um, so that's, you know, one issue with the design meetings. Um, ultimately though, correct me if I'm wrong, will they then be presented, Craig, to our full JLBC meetings, which are 430 meetings? Right, there'll be, um, to go from schematic design into design development, there'll be, I believe there's gonna be one, one big presentation at a library building committee meeting um, to get the thumbs up to move on to the next phase. But we won't get the iterations at the at the whole building committee. We won't see the it, there won't be a, a presentation. No, the, it'll just be the sort of the latest and greatest. Okay. If there are significant, it, it's tough to tell. You know, if there are significant changes, they may Feingold Alexander may think it's most um, um, helpful to do kind of like a before and after. This is where we were. This is where we ended up, and they sort of explain why. Uh, but that's not necessarily going to be the format. So Alex, I, one my thinking was to have a separate event that was at maybe a time other than 9 a.m. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if, uh, you know, it's like for the committee at 9 a.m. and for the public at 4.30, you know? Yeah. And I don't know that we'll get fine gold there, but maybe... We have Craig there and the library director and us and, you know, can, although I don't know. I mean, we do, we do a certain, I don't know whether we would have, I guess we'd have to talk about whether it makes sense to have Feingold come to that meeting or not with the number of meetings that we have and how we want to use those. Right. Okay. Yes. I think there, there's potential to have them do, um, a presentation to a group other than say the design subcommittee or the library building committee. But like you said, there are sort of limited times and limited, um, um, they have limited resources. Uh, each presentation takes a whole bunch of time to kind of prepare for. So yeah, I think if we use that strategically, that would be appropriate. Maybe we have them, maybe we do a virtual event with them presenting the, the final schematics a public meeting like that might make more sense in terms of use of their time like when we get to that point yeah yes okay yeah. any other thoughts comments ideas this is a great uh it's a great plan so far a lot of work since <laughs> last meeting um, it's, okay. it's, it's pretty clear and solid. Cool. Uh, so we do have three attendees um, in the public. Um, if anyone would like to make public comment, you can uh, raise your hand and we would welcome thoughts, comments, ideas, anything you want to share. <laughs> We're open to, love to hear it. Okay, seeing none, um, I think the last piece is topics not anticipated by the chair. I don't have any, I, I did a brain dump, there's nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our next meeting, we'll meet again in two weeks if that meets for every, if that works for everybody, that would be the 31st at 4 p.m. That work, great. Okay. See you then. All right, thank you guys, I really appreciate everything. And thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you all. Bye-bye.